Hello everyone. Um, today I will be talking about um, Corey Wise and Kevin Richardson versus the people of the state of New York. Um, this trial was a part of a bigger case, which was called the Central Park Five case. A lot of people may know this because of the Netflix series When They See Us. Um, so basically the summary behind this case is that there were around 30 teens who were in Central Park. They were fooling around, harassing other bicyclists and joggers. Um, the same day that this was going on, a female jogger was raped and brutally beaten and basically left for dead. Um, so the police had gotten calls of the riot that was going on. And they had caught about, I believe, 14 of the teens who were involved in this. And they were looking for more the next day. So, um, the next day is when they found Trisha Miley's body, who was the female jogger who was raped and brutally beaten. They had connected the, um, the jogger case to the riot that had happened in Central Park. And they believed that, um the teens who were fooling around and causing a riot had also done this. So they were bringing other people in um, and just trying to figure out what was going on. So the same day that Trisha Miley's body was found, three teens were brought in, three of the five teens. Um, Kevin Richardson was brought in as well as Raymond Santana and Antron McRae. The next day, the following day, um, Corey Wise was brought in along with Yusuf Salam. Now, these five boys didn't know each other. The only two who were connected were Corey Wise as well as Kevin Salam. These two were friends. Um, and the only reason that Corey Wise had joined Yusuf Salam was for moral support and just to support him because he was scared and he didn't know what was going on. So these boys were brought. They were questioned for around seven hours they didn't have their parents with them. They also didn't have much knowledge about the law and their rights and what they could have said to prevent this. So the investigators and the detectives and everybody took advantage of that. And they ended up questioning them for seven hours without their parents um, being there with them or without um, letting them know that they could stop this interview or that this wasn't even supposed to happen in the first place. So... These boys, since they were questioned for so long, so much was being brought on them. They were scared. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what to do. They were just scared that they were being accused of this. And they had never seen this woman in their life. Um, they tried to tell the detectives and the investigators and everybody that they didn't know who Trisha Miley was. And that they weren't even, like, they didn't know what was going on. They just followed the group to the park. Um... And they tried to tell them that they had never seen her before, that they would never do something like this, that they were just not like that. Obviously, they didn't listen. And they were accused of the beating of Trisha Miley as well as the rape of her. So, basically, um, they had the investigators and the detectives had written down what they were saying. So, they had coerced them to say something. And once they said that, they wrote that down. Um, then these boys had signed the paper because they were told that if they had signed it, then they would be let go and they would be released and they wouldn't have to worry about this. They just had to say that they had some sort of part in this crime. After that happened, um, the video confessions were made and then that's when this whole thing got taken to trial because they had confessed that they had done the crime. So now, um... They were going to go to trial. So they tried to tell them that they didn't know what was going on. Um, and there was also evidence that supported them. The DNA evidence came back negative for all five boys. So um, when the DNA evidence came back negative, the prosecution basically said since they had confessed, they were going to be tried for it. Um, they didn't really count in the evidence or they didn't really, they just saw past the evidence because they said that they confessed, they said they did it, so they're going to go to trial. Like I said before, the trial was split into two. The first trial was with Antron McRae, Yusuf, Antron McRae, Yusuf Salam, and Raymond Santana. 
um, they were convicted of assault, rape, as well as assault and robbery of another jogger um, who was beaten. And they were sentenced to five to ten years in a youth correctional facility. Um, now onto the second trial was Kevin, Kevin and Corey Wise. So these two had different sentencings, especially because I believe it was because of their age. So Corey was 16. I believe Kevin was around 15 or 14. Um, so Kevin was um, convicted for attempted murder, so sodomy, and robbery of Trish and Riley, as well as robbery um, of the other jogger who was beaten. And he was sentenced to 5 to 10 years in a juvenile facility. Now, Corey, on the other hand, had the worst of all sentencings. So he was he was convicted of lesser charges of sexual abuse, assault, and riot. But he um, he had ended up having a sentence from five to fifteen years in an adult prison. And so, with his case. Um, when he was brought, like, when he had been sentenced to 5 to 15 years in adult prison, it was because he was 16. And he had also went to different facilities. So, I know he went to, um, I believe the Auburn, yeah, Auburn State Correctional Facility. He also was served time at Rikers Island, as well as Attica Correctional Facility and others as well. So, with all these, with the five boys, youth Sif served Six to six years and eight months in a juvenile detention. It was was released on parole. Same with Raymond, but Raymond ended up violating his parole, and he was sentenced to three and a half to seven, I believe, years. It was because of a drug charge. Kevin was, um, he was in the juvenile facility for seven years. Also released on parole. Antron McRae was in there for six years, also released on parole. Corey Wise was in there for 13 years and eight months. He also visited multiple prisons, as I said. And he was finally released when the actual offender for this crime had confessed. Matias Reyes had confessed because he and Corey Wise had an altercation at one of the facilities that they were serving. And then he saw him one other time at a, another facility. And he basically said that he felt bad that somebody else was paying for his crime. And that was the reason that he had confessed to the crime. When Matias Reyes had confessed to the crime, he brought up um, different aspects of the crime that the boys did not know about. He had brought up the exact location of where she was raped and brutally beaten. And the boys didn't know that. They had pointed out a whole nother part in the park. But he knew details that even the investigators didn't know. And when the DNA was, his DNA was um, taken, it matched the DNA that was found on the scene. So that's another way that they connected them, as well as the, the statements that he had made. So in 2002... Um, they were exonerated. There was a lawsuit that was settled for $40 million. This happened in December of 2002. Um, when this happened, the, they didn't get $40 million each, but it was split up between the five boys. And um, the when it was split up, they also had to pay back the defense attorneys that they had gotten. So I really don't think that's fair because I feel like there should be more justice for this. Um, especially in Corey's case, his case is very, I feel like, like it's just sensitive. Like he wasn't even supposed to be a suspect and he just got dragged into this just because. Um, and I also think that the prosecution is to blame because I feel like they just kind of wanted to take them away. So with the lawsuit, um, they accused the city police for false arrest, malicious prosecution, and as well as um, the racial motivation to convict these boys. And also because they weren't given their rights and they weren't told that they could have their parents or that their parents should be brought in because they were minors. 
So that's um, basically the gist of the Central Park 5 case. Another thing that I feel like sh a lot of people don't know about this case is that there was a sixth, um, sixth suspect that was, um, that was also taken into custody. Um, but he actually took a plea deal and got a lesser, um, sentencing. So he kind of just went with that instead of fighting the case. Um, I don't recall what his name was, but I did research and there was a six boy, but they didn't, um, bring that up in the show. So that's basically the Central Park 5 case. Um, that's about it.